you can see without almost any work here, <laughs> I now have details in my highlights, my midtones, and my shadows. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Adobe Live. I am here with my good friend, Aaron Nace. Aaron, what's up? Say hello to everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to Adobe Live, guys. I'm so excited to see you. We're going to have some fun today. So we're going to take you around to the entire circle of our Lightroom Photoshop and then export to mobile workflow. So here's just a kind of a sample of uh, my personal portfolio. And today we're going to be switching gears. I do a lot of like kind of, you know, more studio, like conceptual work and things like that. But for our photo editing session today, let's go ahead and minimize this. I wanted to do something that was a little bit more, um, a little bit just more like uh, approachable. And so we're going to be doing landscape photography. And I really fallen in love with landscape photography. I, my background, as you saw, was like more in like the conceptual stuff. But um, yeah, as I move through my photography career, I find it like I'm just personally more drawn to spending more time outdoors in nature and just like really soaking it up. So my first big tip uh, in general when shooting landscape photography and most photography in general is to shoot uh, bracketed. And basically that's taking multiple different exposures uh, at different, let's say you're you know properly exposed, overexposed and underexposed. And basically this helps you overcome the limited dynamic range of your camera's sensor. And yeah, it really is incredible. And we're gonna show you a few different ways to do that in today's stream. So I'm gonna click on my first image and then just hold shift and then click to my last image. We're just gonna right click here go to photo merge and then over down to HDR. There we go. And we're going to see it's going to pull it up on screen and create an HDR preview. Now, basically what this does is it takes the highlight and the midtone and shadow information from all of these different photos and puts it together automatically. So instead of having the dynamic range of one photo, now I have the dynamic range of nine different photos at nine different exposures. And I'm not saying nine is the magic number here. You could do five, you could do three. Most cameras uh, will do at least five, but you can see without almost any work here, <laughs> I now have details in my highlights, my midtones and my shadows. Okay. Now we do have one little issue here and I don't know if you guys can see this here in the bottom right, um, but the water looks really weird, okay? It looks like very, like it has a lot of artifacts. You can kind of see it here. It looks like blurry here and not blurry there. And the reason is, is I was shooting this relatively late and this was a long exposure photo. So I wanted some movement in the water. And with all this movement, now when I'm trying to combine all these exposures, they combine in a really weird way. So what you want to do is turn on what's called de-ghosting amount. So I'm just gonna turn on where it says de-ghost amount. I'm gonna turn on low. And basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna look for areas of your photos that overlap and don't exactly match up. And then it's gonna choose one or the other photo to put there instead of a combination of both. So we're just gonna click on low and it takes a second because it kind of has to think everything out and redo all the masking. Um, but generally this deghosting will really help out. So I generally start off with deghosting at none and then I'll go through and uh, try low if I need to, because it does take a lot more time to do the deghosting. Your computer has to think a bit more, um, mm. but it will really help out with any of these like weird artifacts that, could, that can crop up. Uh, but let's go ahead and just do a comparison. So I'm gonna just shift click on two of these images and compare them by hitting C on my keyboard here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my, uh, get rid of my tab so we can see what we're going on here. So here on the left, we can see our HDR and on the right, we can see an image that is uh, just a single exposure. So you'll notice how much more detail, let's just go ahead and zoom in, how much more detail we're able to get out of like the cliffs and the foreground and things like that compared to the background. I still have all the detail in the highlights of the image on the right hand side. But now the shadows have dramatically more detail in them than I was able to just capture in a single individual frame. All right, we're just gonna do a couple different uh, you know, changes here. You can see your shadows and highlights. 
Now, these sliders will automatically be adjusted for you when you uh, pull this out of your HDR, uh, the merge to HDR. It actually adjusts your highlights and shadows to get everything where it needs to be, but you can continue to adjust these. Now, in this case, I find that the, um, the ocean is just a little bit too bright in color. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my, uh, my graduated filter here and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna just click here and drag up in this way. And you can see, basically this just creates a gradient. There we go. And then I can kind of move this gradient around. You can see wherever I've dragged this around, this is where it affects. So I can make it darker or lighter and I can kind of move this around to wherever I want it to be. So I'm just gonna bring it like right down here to the ocean and then go ahead and move my cursor around. And then there we go. I find that that's just a little bit more of what I want in this image. Um, again, the goal here is not always to like make everything the right, you know, middle exposure and, uh, you know, everything like perfectly detailed. Like sometimes you actually want things to be dark and you want things to be light. That brings contrast and interest into your photos. So just by darkening the ocean a little bit, uh, it's just bringing a little bit more attention to the sky. Let's say you capture an image like this that you're, you're pretty happy with, um, but you want to maybe just make the sky a little bit more interesting. Like in this case, I just actually didn't really capture that much detail in the sky. Let's just bring our exposure down a little bit. I'm going to bring my sh shadows up a little bit here. There we go. So not much detail in the sky at all. Let's see if we can bring this into Photoshop to actually add a sky. So what we're going to do is right click. We're going to go to edit in and I'm going to go to uh, open as smart object in Photoshop. So this is just going to go ahead and pop it in Photoshop. I want to show you guys how easy the sky replacement tool is in Photoshop because it's so cool. And there are so many times when we just don't have that much information in the sky to work with. So we're going to go to uh, edit and I'm going to go down here to sky replacement. And basically it's going to figure out everything that it needs to. It's going to figure out your sky and automatically do it. Not only will it pop the sky in automatically, but it's also going to adjust your foreground to match the color of your sky. And I can adjust things like the brightness of my sky to kind of match. You can adjust the color temperature of your sky here to make it a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer to match your image. That's looking good. You can see the highlights in the sky are matching the highlights here. Uh, I recommend you know choosing a sky that kind of fits with your overall image. You can see we have, you know, this is a sunset image. So I wouldn't choose a sky with like bright blue clouds like that. And again, I'm going by the fact that, you know, we already have a sun in our image and that's kind of like what's going to inform the right. light there and i'm going to just put this output to a new layer and hit okay and you can see all of this stuff that it does right there for me uh all good to go can you believe that how do we get this to the phone and like what's what's the preferred workflow so i personally I do all my exporting from Lightroom. So I will do, you know, Lightroom for my main, you know, exposure adjustments, light adjustments, dodging and burning type of thing. I'll go into Photoshop for advanced object removal, things like uh, any type of retouching that I have to do, any more compositing or advanced effects. That's a great place for Photoshop, but I always go back into Lightroom for exporting. So I'm just going to go ahead and export this out. Okay. And we're going to choose our image format. I'm just going to choose our JPEG here. Um, generally, I'll do quality about 80% because I find the difference between 80% and 100% is uh, not that big of a visual difference, but it saves on file size. So I'm just going to do 80% and then uh, color space, you want it to be sRGB. This is a big one, sRGB. Okay. Now, uh, generally, I'll put this in the same folder uh, structure that I use for my Lightroom images. So. I, I name all of my photo shoots by date and then the name of the photo shoot itself. Uh, Lightroom always brings it by date and then I append the name of the shoot. Um, and in this case, I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for making everything very simple. So let's go ahead and hit export here and I'm just gonna pop this on my desktop and hit open. There we go. So now I just want to pop onto my desktop. We're just gonna find a new finder window there we go. We're going to go on the desktop. And what we're going to do is I find the easiest way to get this. And I'm a, I'm an Apple user in general. So PC is going to be a little bit different. Um, but the easiest way that I do this is I just right click on my image. I go to share and then I go to airdrop. Airdrop. 
Yeah, AirDrop is the easiest. And then I just go on my iPhone Very here easy. and then it pops me into my phone. All right, so we're gonna start off with a subject in the background. So I do have a bit of a texture here in the background. So I wanna start off with the clone stamp tool. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna start by clone stamping this out. So we're gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool and then Alt or Option to sample right up there. Okay, we're gonna go right down here and then boom we're just starting off okay nothing we haven't done before yep pretty easy. there we go pretty easy so far everybody following along there we go we're able to do that now you can see from the left and the right that's not perfect so i yeah. got a sample here and then paint this in right over here there we go to make sure that lines up how we want it to all right, so that's starting to look pretty good there. We're gonna do that one more time. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. There we go. And we're gonna continue on with the same plan here. Now what's this texture here, I don't really know what this texture is. And you can see this little gray area here to the right of the subject. I don't actually have that much of space to, to sample this, right? Like if I wanted to sample this, and start painting it over. I just don't have that much space, but I want this to continue over. So what we're gonna do is just simply grab our brush tool. So we're gonna hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna make a large soft edge brush and I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and select this color. Now you can select any color, just hold Alt or Option and select any color in your image and then just start painting with it if you want, okay? So we're gonna use a large soft edge brush. I'm gonna sample this color and then I'm gonna hold Shift and just simply paint to the left and the right. Nice. Okay, now I'm gonna sample this color that's a little bit lighter and we're gonna start painting in here. So keep in mind, I want everyone to keep in mind that this is just the brush tool. This is not a fancy, you know, automatic type of selection tool. This is literally just the brush tool. Okay, we're gonna make our brush a little bit larger. I'm gonna go into my window and then down to our brush settings, okay? And I'm gonna turn on my shape dynamics and I'm gonna raise the minimum diameter just a little bit, okay? That's gonna help me make a brush that's a little bit more round. And it's gonna, it's a little bit more soft rather. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to create something that looks actually like it's out of focus. There we go. And I'm gonna kind of paint in some variation here as well. There we go. So you can see I'm still painting over and I'm not necessarily concerned here about, there we go, about painting over top of the subject on the right. You know, I'm just kind of painting this in and using, just kind of using the old fashioned eyedropper tool to sample color and then paint this in. Thank you so much, Aaron, for joining us. It's been an awesome two days. I've had a lot of fun hosting you. Such a fun audience today.